Howdy chaps, welcome back to another fantastic video. We are on to part four of the seal panel. Um, probably technically five because of last week's uh, little distraction that uh, wiped out a whole filming day. But anyway, uh, we're back and there's been some updates. Alrighty, sometimes I really wish this microphone wasn't as good as it is because it really does pick up my nasliness. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, right, so uh, there's been some progress. A lot of this has been happening after work each day. Like I've, I used, to, I've actually taken a pretty big break from the tank because uh, I felt a bit burnt out from that, honestly. Um, so I've been putting my personal spare time into getting this thing as far along as fast as possible because I'd like it done um, in a timely fashion so what's happened since there I've repaired that piece that's ready to go back in we'll do that in a minute in this video dad has been uh, diligently cleaning off the surfaces and etching um, yeah we've got a bit of surface rust to deal with I've also been doing uh, the odd bit of rust you might notice that I've now fixed the top of this quarter panel I had to put the little corner back in here and then I was like, how am I going to make that piece? And I saw I had that donor door over there that I'm not going to use. And I was like, oh, I know what shape size exactly the same as that. Top corner of the door. Fit perfectly in the top corner of the quarter panel because obviously that shape has to continue along before it gets here and it dips down on the door. So that worked perfectly for fixing that. So all of the original hackery that was um, through there from when all this was hacked out is now slowly coming creeping back up <clears throat> I put a piece in here last night obviously I gotta do a little bit more but that took out a good chunk of rust um, did this one the other day inside and out took a chunk out of that and I know people are gonna go oh my god did you just hack up a good guard well good is a relative term Yes, I did. <laughs> I took a chunk clean out of that guard because I plan on putting new guards on it. I also have another right-hand guard up there, which is actually better than this one. So, sorry to say it, that one bought the farm. Also, it already had chunks cut out of it at the front for, like, clearing big tyres. And it's not that straight. It's a bit bent. So I'm like, that wheel arch is just fine uh, because it's actually the same as in the back here. It's a little bit different. And it's really hard to not get a bit of warpage, but mostly perfect. Um, I've actually got that sitting on. That's going to solve a lot of that issue. I started pin pulling the big dents in here, but I think I'm going to have to slice it, pull it, and uh, hammer and dolly it with a spoon in there. It's a technical term, and then re-weld it. Um, so there's no rust; it's just a dent, and that'll solve all of that. That's well on its way. That's done. That's done. This will be done in today's video, and possibly that, depends how that goes. Um, and then it'll be most of the, obviously I've got to get, finish off the C pillar at the top there, but I, I need to actually get some more one wheel steel, because I'm actually a bit out of it. Um, but that'll be most of the side done. And then Dad surprised the hell out of me the other day, when he bought me these two things. Out of the blue. Um, we'd been discussing it, and then he comes strolling in, and he goes, oh, I bought you a door. I said, what? Yeah, I bought you a door. Uh, uh, what? No, I bought you a door for the X XW. Like a door. Yeah, a door. A door. Huh. I very rarely get surprised, um, but that surprised the hell out of me. There is a brand new, full, complete driver's door. And they're not actually that expensive. I mean, I couldn't afford it. <laughs> uh, um, but I think $853, I think something like that. I mean, why would you waste your time fixing a door when you can just buy one rust-free, straight, and good to go? I'll be test fit hopefully test fitting that on the car in the end of this video. Let's see how that goes. Uh, and there's a door skin for the rears because you cannot buy a full rear door, which kind of sucks. But gee, those skins are good. Um, no offense to the Holden stuff, but that Ford stuff craps all over it. Um, so I've de-skinned the door I'm going to fix, which is actually the original one off the car. And I've been 
soaking it in the citric acid slowly but surely every day just rotate it a bit um, it seems to be working rather well and yeah so I really hate the fact they got rust up that pillar that sucks uh, that's about the worst of the whole doors a couple of the spots not too bad this is going to be chopped up for bits it's already been chopped up for bits and the dash has had its bath in the brew I've just been spraying this this stuff's really good the Oztec rust converter um, I'm just doing that because I don't know when I'll get to this but I don't want it to go rusty again so it um, I don't exactly know what it does but it uh, like seals up the rust and stops it dead in its tracks and you can actually paint over it if you wanted to um, but I just don't want it to get any worse so this whole thing has been de-rusted everywhere that's black was spotlessly clean so obviously the dash frame needs a hell of a lot of rust repairs but gee putting it in there wheelie bin sped up things yeah and obviously I'm just coated it with that stuff to make sure it doesn't re-rust and that's one of the beams that's going to go on the roof eventually and front panel off the XW um, been making some progress on the customers cars uh, gee these take a long time to do that drives me mental that does but nearly ready to put the plenum timer back on I think I've put 18 individual pieces into there through the top of the pillar and all that area because even the there we go, well, there you go cactus so you, you took that out and then the piece behind it was totally stuffed as well so I'm like it just doesn't end with that car so enough chit chat paddyback give the dog a bone I'm gonna crack a Pepsi Max wouldn't it be nice to be sponsored by them <laughs> and uh, get stuck into it I mean I can immediately go put that back in now so uh, let's get cracking Alrighty, so that bit's in. It was a bit fiddly, so I decided not to film it um, because repairing it because it was so bad, it actually was a little bit distorted. But it's in there now. It's actually fitted perfectly. So etched the area that's not going to be have any more on it. Copper spray the area that's going to have the next piece on it. I'm going to put the next piece in and weld it in, and then repair it like I did to that which you didn't see. Unfortunately, it was a good repair that one turned out. Um, so and then I was poking and prodding and I found some rust up here um, but I mean I knew I was going to open this whole area up eventually anyway so I mean it looks like I'll be putting a lip on here and then that lip and then that lip and then that piece and then that piece so there'll be a whole bunch of area repairs in here too but today's goal is to get this in try and fit the door and possibly get that done let's hopefully so yeah it's all going quite well I sort of don't go too nuts and grinding down welds in areas that you're never ever gonna see I mean technically you never ever see that area but you know I sort of when you take the guard off you do see it so you know try to make it right but uh, onward and upward alrighty now I just had the customer who owns this come through and we just got rid of the the front cut that was needed for this so slight distraction there but we're progressing along we're going to get this piece back in which it's fitting beautifully and then once it's back in we can then repair it so it shouldn't be too hard uh, but onward and upward all looking lovely um, just sort of keep you up I'm probably gonna skip a few steps because I really need to get things done at a, a good rate and obviously stopping to film actually takes a bit of time so um, I'll probably just finish tack welding that in there and put a ow pointy oh, it's like Swiss cheese it wasn't it didn't look that bad but once it went through the acid it literally ate all the rust and it was one holy song bitch afterwards um so I'll probably do a piece through here keep that in one piece and do another one that comes around up and across and down and weld the join and then we'll do another one going that way it seems 
like a uh, convoluted way to do things but it keeps it simple and keeps the shape and lets me do it without stressing too much and I mean some of these videos are meant to help people doing it at home and the way I do it is not necessarily the way that I have a text message not necessarily the way that other people do it but it's the way that is keeps it very very simple and not over complicated so you can do it in stages and not overwhelm yourself with a massive task so keep it simple stupid the old kiss method all right onward and upward gotta make sure i don't forget to film stuff this time oopsies hang on all right so this was the swiss cheese that was in there wafer thin uh, so put that onto another piece of tin see one of the tricks is you've got to remember it might look complicated but it is actually a flat piece of steel don't overthink it guys don't overthink it so flat piece of steel traced out into another piece cut it trim it fit it in I took a little V out of the middle because one half leans over a bit further than the rest and that's basically almost all of the bottom done in one go and then this next piece uh, ironically yes I'm probably going to recut those welds but at least it gets it in for now and the next piece is just another flat with a curve just a snip two lines drill a hole for a plug weld weld in done and it's the whole A pillar all fixed so don't overthink the repair look at it in its simple shapes you know that's a flat piece that's a flat piece you know some of the hints for people who get stressed out by it. it's not that complicated it just looks more complicated than it is so yes I'm gonna keep welding that in it's looking lovely uh, and then do that next bit and then I reckon we're gonna try off at the door time is fleeting today it's also bitterly cold but I really want to put the door on so I might skip that repair today because this is taking a bit longer than I would like um, but at least that means That'll effectively end the sill panel repair too if we get that A-pillar done because that's everything involved in it, obviously the floor pans, but you know, you know what I mean. Anyway, onward and upward. Well, even I get surprised at times. Uh, that is a damn good fitting door. I actually think that fits better than some factory panels I've seen. Um, also, it hasn't been beaten around for 30 years, 40 years. This might even be 50 years soon. Um, but damn, that fits well. Uh, a little bit of piss farting around with getting the hinges because obviously when you're using an original door, it's got a, like a rust stain of where the hinge was and it's a pretty good starting point. Uh, so when you have a super clean door you're like ah, okay guessing 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 but it's pretty easy the bottom of the door needs to have a arrow straight line it's about five mil it's not that hard to work out um, the stupid those plates that the bolts go into oh, it's one of my pet hates with these cars yes they give you an unholy amount of adjustment but damn it to hell they're a pain in the ass to deal with because I don't know what it is with these ones. It doesn't happen on those ones. But the plates quite often will just fall off their locating dowel and fall in the bottom of the pillar and you just got to stop. Take the door back off, put the thing back on and hope to go when you put the bolts back through. You don't push it off its thing again. Uh, and they're always a bit of a pain. So you got to use like a screwdriver through the hole, one of the other holes and, you know, hope and pray. It did take... <laughs> Ironically, getting the door to line up was easier than it was to put the bolts in. Um, so much fart assing around it's also cold here um, but damn um, also I didn't have the catch in because I know the striker is actually um, loose so even if I had the catch in it doesn't strike it properly and actually latch on so like this one is firm but this one in here is actually loose and rolls around so it doesn't actually even when that door was on it didn't actually strike it it just kept moving like it's actually broken in the thing not it's not where it's bolted on but this bit's loose so it won't securely latch every time it's also a bit of a normal thing actually happens a lot on driver's doors ironically 
Um, my brother's Fairlane's like that. It doesn't shut properly because of the latch, the striker is all buggered. Um, how about that though? I am over the moon, flabbergasted, tickled pink. Look at the side of this car. I mean, if you really squint hard and can sort of blur out the rust, it is amazing. Clearly, we didn't fix that hole in the front of the torque box, but come on, that's next week that's problem solved. Um, I've never fitted one of these doors. I bought one before, but never actually got around to putting it on. Um, but, you know, I, I wouldn't exactly call it arrow straight, but I mean, put the striker in, line up the door, and then hit that with a rubber mallet, and you'll certainly solve that issue. But do remember, the panel gaps in these cars were pretty rubbish at day one, so aiming for per perfect panel gaps is actually not necessarily needed. But I just can't get over how well that fits. I'm like, now that, that's a good door. And of course I sat the rear skin in there for two seconds and I don't like walking away from it. Um, but gee, uh, making progress. I'm actually pretty happy with this. I've often said XWXY Falcons are one of the easiest Australian cars to restore because the parts availability is mind-blowing. Um, there's so much stuff is made from it. So many people make bits for them, it's incredible. I don't understand for the life of me why nobody makes a boot lid or a roof skin. Can't work that one out. Um, I had a few leads on boot lids, I just haven't chased them up yet because, you know, busy. But, gee, look at it. You'd almost think it was worth, like, three or four bucks wouldn't you? <laughs> you wait till I get that back door on <laughs> back door sorry get the back door on and have it lined up and the front door on and the guard and have all this done Ooh, it's gonna actually be definitely not rubbish nice oh well chaps I hope you enjoyed this episode it's um that's actually made me quite happy. Um, definitely reckon um, if you've got the means, just buy a new door. Or wouldn't even waste your time messing around with a second hand one that you need to fix. Um, they fit pretty damn good. And my theory goes if you put the aftermarket rear skin, aftermarket front door, and aftermarket guard, and bonnet and other guard, you know. If you, it's funny, if you use one aftermarket panel in between, say, a real original door and a real original guard, you'll probably find it doesn't fit. However, if you use all aftermarket panels, you'll probably find it's not bad. <laughs> that's my theory on it. And we'll test it, because that's what it's going to be. So, once the rear door's done, front guard's on, and I've done the rear quarter and fixed that, that little dent, I'm probably going to and fix the A C pillar. I'm going to actually bodywork that quarter panel. And uh, should be pretty right on this side. Obviously, I still got to do the floors, but and you know, the dash. But we'll get the outside of the car pretty good first. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's not the best, not the worst. Um, and I'll see you on the next one.